there's a number to that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. Let's all stand as we start our Wednesday service. Let's stand together as we sing our first song tonight as we begin our services. <laughs>
Praise God for that. Let's ask for Preacher Ben to please open some prayer. Thank you. Please be seated. Good evening to all of you. Well, please pray our please please pray for our school. Our uh, eighth graders who went to GSX competition this afternoon, so they'll be competing again tomorrow and uh, Friday. Uh, let us pray that they will do their best, and uh, and again uh, uh, get the highest award. We've been getting the highest award for the last eight years. Amen. Praise God for our school, and I'm ho hoping that today they will make it again. And the elementary level uh, will be competing next month, and they're also preparing uh, for that as well. Uh, so please pray uh, for some of our school staff uh, were with, you know, who uh, went with them at the same time, about three or four families also, Pastor Julius' family and Pastor Francis and who else, uh, but the Gill and family and uh, the rest of our school staff, they left today. And uh, uh, I got a, a text from uh, preacher Mike Veloria. Please pray that uh, uh, you know Michaela and him uh, are, are not feeling that well. We do have a lot of people who are sick right now as well uh, because of the weather. Okay, so uh, we're at least we're we're glad and and joyful that we can be able to make it tonight. Amen, Amen. and praise God for that. Uh, uh, this coming Sunday, so uh, don't forget. Okay, uh, please uh, come. And worship with us coming Sunday. I will not be again here this coming Sunday because uh, the Emmanuel Baptist Church in Delano, California is having their missions conference, their annual missions conference, and I will be the speaker there the whole day, okay, uh, uh, in the morning and also in the evening. So please pray for me that God will use uh, me and, and, and of course, uh, my family will be with me and the message to thrill the hearts of the people there in supporting missions. Amen. Okay, uh, and also uh, please pray for uh, uh, for IUBC Riverside. They will be having their family conference. I will be also a speaker in two weeks. Uh, in within two weeks, we begin on uh, March 19 until March 22. Uh, it's, so it's going to be their annual event as well. They have scheduled a family conference, so uh, to be from Thursday until Sunday. Uh, so please pray uh, for that event. And of course, don't forget our anniversary and, and in conference on April 29 until March the 3rd. Uh, many pastors have already asked for invitations from the Philippines, and some of them already received their visa from the American Embassy. Some of them are, are coming for sure. Okay, and uh, uh, just uh, praying for uh, resources, other financial resources. Okay, and that uh, God will give us a good crowd. Unfortunately, the uh, 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 original speaker I invited, I invited a good friend, Dr. Brad Weniger, to come. At first, of course, he, he, he said he would come. And then uh, about uh, three weeks ago, he sent me a text and said, Brother Bante, I'm sorry, I can't be able to come okay, for, for, uh, for some <clears throat> unexpected reason. Okay, so we have another speaker coming. So please pray for that. All right, let's all stand now, please, and sing our welcome song. <laughs> Shake with one another.
Kazu. We go to the chorus now. With God's love, once you experience it, you want to sing the best life to speak. You want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend. Be seated. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God for that song. Let's call our special number for tonight. Uh, Brother Aquino, preacher Aquino. Glad to be here. Yeah, Good evening to all of you. And uh, we're going to miss some of the people that went to LA. Let's pray for their safety as they travel back and forth. And it's been a, a blessing to see all those uh, young ones going there and, and uh, having their fun. At the same time, they're, get, they're getting blessing for serving the Lord. So nice to be here. Uh, we almost can't come here because. It's my wife's birthday today, oh, and uh, instead of we love to come, we love to come here and and uh, be a blessing Amen. to you guys. And we're getting blessing from from the church also, Amen. from the preacher. <coughs> was guilty with nothing to say and they were coming to take me away but then a voice from heaven was heard that said let her go But 
Jesus, God's Son, took my place. And I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. I should have hung. But Jesus, God's Son, took my place. But Jesus, God's Son, took my place. And Jesus, God's Son, took Thank you, Brother Rino and Mrs. Rino. Happy birthday. Let's all stand for our offertory song. Preachers, kindly usher for us. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8, verse 16, it says, Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Preacher Jeremy, please pray for the offering. Let's sing our cheerful giving as we give to the Lord. I obey you, Lord, the master of my soul, yielding my will to keep my tights and all, forsaking sin to follow your command. Accept my gift and lift your name up to the world. With this increase, I honor you. My loving Father, thank you for the things you do. The love you show, your grace and your mercy too. I offer you the first fruits of my labor. Express my love for you with my life and all I sacrifice for you. I worship you, I worship you. Remain standing, please, as we go to our Bible pledge. Let's recite this all together. This is my Bible. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It tells me who I am, what I can become, and where I am going. It renews my mind, changes my heart, and refreshes my soul. It is my daily bread. By faith, I will believe its promises, obey its commandments, and honor its principles in my life. With the Bible as my guide, I will walk by faith and not by sight. Please remain standing as I call out our senior pastor. Thank you. Please be seated. Oh, my goodness. We... We are a local long ngayong gabi, huh? Have a lot of people who are not here, of course, with the competition, and some people get uh, sick. Uh, this is understandable, okay? Please call the rest of our preachers who are not here on the inside. Where's uh, 
whoever outside. Okay, so it's called in here. Give me some math. Uh, I'm still organizing the uh, the, ha the handouts about the Lega 3 approach and soul winning. But what we're going to do tonight is we're going to do some practice, okay, some role playing on how to use uh, this approach. Okay, but let uh, me share with you again uh, the uh, major points on this Lega 3 uh, soul winning program. We'll go over this again, okay, so you understand. If you can please move to the front, I would appreciate it, okay? So let's all be, let's, let's all be in front. Now, first thing that we need to understand in soul winning, our job is not to save. Mm -hmm. Amen? I think all of us understand that. It is not our job to save because the Savior is not us. The Savior is Jesus. And so our responsibility is only to plant the seed, to share, to sow the seed. That's our main responsibility. And then after planting the seed, we need to nurture the seedling in order for that seedling to become a mature tree. You know, uh, to nurture the young uh, uh, believer in order for that young believer to become a mature Christian. And so we need, we have some three main points here, or four main points. The first, the first major point is prepare the soil. Okay, the soil represents the heart. Prepare the soil. The second major point is, after you prepare the soil, the soil is ready, plant the seed. And what is the seed? The gospel. Okay, when you plant the seed, you do not plant the milk of God's word. Okay, you do not plant the meat of God's word. They still cannot handle the milk and the meat of God's word. They're not even a baby yet. And so one thing that you need to share is the gospel. And what, oh, and, and, and what kind of gospel do you need to share? The gospel about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the birth, I mean, the, yeah, birth actually is included there. In fact, uh, if you remember, uh, the angels, when, uh, when the angels came and announced the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, it was tidings of great joy. So his birth was also included in the gospel. His coming, first coming, is, you know, and his death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures. You can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So you plant and share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, and then number three, number three major point, nourish the plant with God's word and fellowship. Nourish the plant with God's word and fellowship. That's very, very important. We do not only stop once a person receives Christ, we need to follow up, okay? It's important when they go out there and somebody gets saved, you know, this is the only uh, time you're going to be meeting the person. You need to go back to the person next week and tell the person, you know what, since you've been saved, the Lord has uh, chosen me to be able to disciple you, and I want to see you again this coming Saturday. If it's not available, don't, don't allow him to make an excuse. Oh, you're not available Saturday? Okay, I can come back Friday. Oh, well, I'm gonna, well, I can come back Thursday. Don't allow the person to make an excuse. If he says, well, I'm not available Thursday, okay, how about Wednesday? All right, and be sure to uh, really uh, uh, send a message that you're, that you're genuinely interested with him. Okay, that you're willing to guide him through this. It's important that you nourish the plan with God's word and personal fellowship. That means personal fellowship means that you need to make the word of God real. Real in that person's life. Because we are the only gospel, we are the only truth, right. we're the only Bible they read. Okay? And so uh, we are representing the word of God here. And so nor is the plant with the word and personal fellowship. And then lastly, Transplant the plant or transplant the prospect to where he could be fruitful and grow more. So it's like, you know, when you plant uh, a seed and then it becomes in a seedling, the seedling you put in a nursery. Okay? Now what do you, what, what do you call that? Uh, 
that nursery. <laughs> greenhouse, they put in the greenhouse where, 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 where uh, you know, it, it is watered every day, where it is also protected from too much sun. Right? The reason why it's greenhouse is because it's being protected from too much sun. But you do not leave the seed laying in the greenhouse all the time. There will come a time that you need to transplant the seedling outside to where it could grow more. Amen? I think that we're also, that, that this is also uh, the time that we also err. Okay? We, 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 we leave the prospect, okay, uh, you know, leave the prospect uh, not growing. And the prospect remains to be babe in Christ. We need to be able to transplant him to where the prospect can grow more and to where the prospect can be fruitful. Now, how do you go that? Now, in the book of Hebrews chapter 5, let me just, uh, just a review. I'm not sure if I gave this passage to you. In number 4, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 13, a very important passage. It says here in verse 12, For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles, of the oracles of God are become such as that need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age. That means you should not only feed the Christians milk all the time. We, we need to begin to expose, uh, to expose the Christians to uh, the meat of God's word. Okay? And we need to do that. Our church needs to... A church needs to have a program to provide that. And a, a, a soul winner also must have a, a way to be able to uh, uh, nourish the, 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 the new believer, uh, you know, progressively. Okay? Not, not the same way all the time. All right? So, so that's how you do it. Put him in a place where he can grow more. How else can you put a prospect in a place to grow more? You can do that by getting the prospect be involved in the ministry. Assign him a responsibility in the church. Don't just allow him to just come to church and be and sit and sit in the pew and only listen. Allow him to begin to exercise what he's learning, to uh, uh, to be able to uh, 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 to uh, practically. You know, apply all the principles he's learning from the word of God. So get the prospect involved in the ministry. Encourage him to serve in the local church. That's like what, what Brother Jerome did, okay? He, you know, I told him to go out and get the ministry. Get into an ushering program. Get into a choir. And help in the Sunday school. That's how you can grow and that's how you can learn. And also train and equip the prospect to serve. You got to train the prospect. Equip the prospect to serve. And also teach the prospect fruitfulness. The fruitfulness not only is not only bearing fruit, it's not only bearing, it's not only bearing more fruit, but it is also bearing what? Much fruit. But remember, soul winning is not about number. Okay? When you go out there, you know you, you are not only looking to uh, uh, save more people. So that you, you, you can come back in the church and brag about how many people uh, that has been saved, have been saved. No, that's not your job. Okay? Uh, your job is to be able to see somebody saved and nurture that person. It's like mothers. Now, how many of you here are mothers? Mothers, you only give birth one at a time. Okay? When you give birth, what do you do with the baby? You raise the baby. I don't think you want to immediately have a baby the following week or the following month. Right? You, need, you first of all need to concentrate on the first baby you give birth to. Okay? You don't just say, uh, oh, praise God, I have a baby now. Okay, next, I'm going to have to have a baby again. Because I just want to have babies. That's not your aim. Your aim is to be sure that each baby that, that, that you have given birth to will grow and will mature. That's the same principle when it comes to spiritual children. Amen? Same principle. It must not change. Okay? And so I, 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 I want to challenge you. When you go out there soul winning and somebody gets saved. You know, I mean, I hear three people get saved. Can you imagine if those three people get saved and the following day you go back there? Now, it's not going to be easy. 
thousand them will try to reject you. But you know what? It's your rejection, okay, versus your commitment. Once they see you're committed, despite of the rejection, I tell you, they, give, they, 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 they will give up on rejecting you. Because once they see how you're committed to them, they will begin to open themselves to you. And I've experienced that in my life. The thou, you know, that, that, that thou, I did that, you know, uh, I mean, e even today, if I am out of time, I do that, okay? And so this is one thing you should do. Now, to work on every prospect, one prospect at a time is very important. One prospect at a time, okay? And so now, prepare the soil. Now, how do we prepare the soil? That means we need to prepare the soil the heart must be prepared. The soil is the heart. Now that's why in Matthew chapter 13, verse, verse 18 and 23, the parable of the sower. Remember that? The parable of the sower. Now how many kinds of soil do we, do we have, do we, do we see in the parable of the sower? Actually, there are four kinds, it says, but actually there are only three kinds of soil. And then you turn those three kinds of soil into a good soil. Okay? Now, all, you know, all of us know that you can never find a naturally, well, of course, uh, once you go to the, uh, to, uh, uh, to the mountain, a volcanic, uh, volcanic soil though that's fertile, that's good soil. But too often, you don't find good soil. In order for you to have a good soil, you need to what? Prepare the soil. You need to till the soil. And so in this passage, uh, we, 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 have been, uh, we, we were uh, introduced to different kinds of soil. We have the uh, uh, wayside soil, okay, the stony ground soil, and the thorny soil. And the Bible actually teaches us through this parable on how, on, how, on how to respond and how to work on each kind of soil. On how we can be able to really, you know, uh, uh, plant in each different kinds of soil. And, and the only thing we got to do is, is is prepare that soil in order for the soil to become a good soil. Because you want the heart to be a good heart. Okay? And in and, and doing that, in doing that, it's not best for us to, uh, to immediately introduce, introduce spiritual things. Because the Bible says a natural man does not understand spiritual things. A natural man cannot, can never interact spiritually because he's dead in trespasses and in sin. And yet, a natural man can act physically, he can act intellectually, and he can act emotionally. So don't immediately introduce about virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, or about the book of Revelation, or about the book of Daniel. I mean, they don't even, they can't even understand that. Only, on, on, only try to win them to yourself, okay? Talk about things that will interest them at the very beginning. That's how you soften him. Talk about things that, uh, that, 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 that uh, will, will really uh, give him a, a, a lot of interest, okay? Communicate with him uh, in things that he can relate to. If he's a doctor, talk about medicine. If he's a lawyer, talk about law. If he's a banker, talk about whatever, okay? But be sure you need to, you need to know where he's coming from and deal and, 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 and use that. That's why... Whenever you go to a house, you know what I would do whenever I go to the house? I observe around. Well, you know why I observe the house? Outside and inside? I want to observe, okay, what are the things he might, he might have interest on. If I see some musical instrument, I would think, oh, this guy, you know, is interested with music, so I'm going to talk about music. Okay? He has, if he has a lot of pictures on the wall, I say, oh, this guy is uh, loves photography. I'm going to talk about photography with this guy. If he has some children, I will talk about you know how to raise kids and uh, how are you doing it raising kids. A lot of children. If you see that he if he has a lot of uh, things on, on you know in, in the kitchen about food, maybe he's interested in food. So you talk about food. So talk about something that will interest the prospect. That's how you soften him. Okay. Once once he becomes. Uh, uh, once he becomes a good catch to you, that means he begins to listen to you. You, 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 you get, you, you, you're now, uh, you, 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 got, you got his interest. Then you can begin talking to him about the gospel. 
about the gospel. The gospel, the gospel of relationship is the most important thing. Uh, so make your prospect comfortable and safe in your presence. That's what the doctor would say, you know, be folksy. Now, do not provoke the prospect with the, you know, with the, with, with, with the, uh, uh, shall, shall, shall I call it, topic that will get, that will go into a kind of debate or argument. Do not provoke the prospect with the word of God. You know, sometimes we use that. We are not careful with uh, choosing the word of God, and so we provoke the prospect. I, even in choosing the word of, in choosing the, the, the word, we need to be, uh, we need to be, uh, be careful about that, okay, because we're not ready to encounter that. So reach the prospect with compassion, just like what the, word, what, what the Lord Jesus Christ did in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Now, also, in preparing the heart, approach the prospect with no expectation. Never expect from the prospect because they cannot decide. Remember, prospects do not decide for them to be saved. Yes. Don't say it. Say, oh, I'm sorry. That's not the topic I want to talk about. about with you. Okay? You don't, uh, you don't go there. Okay? If you made a mistake talking about, for example, a tribulation period, oh, I don't think you're ready for that. Okay? Here's a more, there's, a, there's a more important message I want to share with you. Okay? And I promise that when I share with you this message, I'm going to only share that with you too next time. But you need to understand. Okay? He needs that first. It's like for, you're dealing with a baby, and, the ba and, and all of a sudden you, you gave the baby uh, uh, salt, and it starts choking. Are you going to give him salt more? No. He doesn't need that yet. He's going to choke. Same thing with the prospect. Don't allow him to choke. Okay? Don't. All right. Okay, so, uh, so approach the prospect with no expectation. You cannot expect a prospect from the prospect. The prospect will cannot make a decision to, to, even, to even repent and to even receive the Lord Jesus Christ until the prospect becomes quickened with the Holy Spirit. How, can, how is the prospect weakened? Share the gospel. When you share the gospel, the Holy Spirit begins to work in the prospect's heart. And immediately when he is quickened, he begins to understand. He begins to understand the word, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You, you know, when the Holy Spirit works, I tell you, even how much you are under the influence of anything, the, whole, the power of the Holy Spirit is much greater than the, the influence. I remember my father actually preached a message, and one of those who came forward actually was a drunk. Totally drunk, that in the process of him coming to, uh, uh, coming to the altar, he fell, and he fell asleep. He fell asleep. He really fell, and then, and, and then conked out. But my father said, you know, bring him to the room and then when he wakes up share with him the gospel he must have reason why he's coming forward you know that very night he got saved and he was drunk and, and a year, several years later he became the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Legasco City you know so don't never underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit I've shared the gospel with a person who is an atheist I share the gospel with a person who is a Buddhist. You know, I remember a, a, a Buddhist lady sharing the gospel with, and he was telling about, oh, yeah, I am Buddha. I said, I, I, and so I had to win that person. I had to really soften his heart. You know how I soften his, her heart? I told her, you know what? I'm not against Buddha. In fact, I believe in, 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 in almost everything that Buddha teaches. Those are good moral, moral, moral commandments, moral values. You know, I believe in Buddha the same way I believe in my, in my teacher in a good manner and the right conduct. But if ever I need to trust my soul for me to be saved and to, to, for, for me to have forgiveness, I can only trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he understood that. And, you know, I, I, I did not provoke him by saying, oh, Buddha is wrong. Don't believe in Buddha. It's not going to work. Huh? You don't say that. Because when you say that, you're just provoking him. So I said, you know, Buddha, Buddha has a good, has a lot of good teaching. That's why people are, people, people are following because he's being a good teacher. You know, I believe in Buddha the way I believe my, my, my teacher in a good manner is the right conduct. But if I want to put my trust on a savior, 
Jesus is the only person, you know, who, who, who actually uh, came to this earth to be the Savior. Buddha did not come as a Savior. He came as a teacher. Uh, Muhammad did not come as a Savior. He also came as a prophet. Only Jesus who is the, was the only person who declared himself as a Savior. And he also died as a Savior. So who should I trust for my salvation? The Savior. So you do not need to, you know, you do not need to, uh, uh, this, you know, uh, totally lambast the religion, okay, or be negative about religion. That's why you don't start in, in being negative against religion. It's not going to work. You're only provoking. Okay, you're only provoking uh, the carnal, the carnality man. So when you work with a prospect, okay, do not expect because the prospect does not have the ability to respond. They cannot make a decision without the quickening power of the Spirit of God. In John chapter 5, verse 21. In John chapter 5 and verse 21. I just want to, I will go through this so at least you will understand. John chapter 5, verse 21. It's, it says there in verse 21. But as the Father raised up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Now let me, let me share this thing with you. Sometimes, you know, when you go out there and we share the gospel, sometimes we feel bad if, 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 the, person, if the person does not receive Christ. Right? Oh, what have I done wrong? Have I, have I used the burdens right? How come, he, how come he has not received? How come he did not receive the Lord Jesus Christ? Hey! God quickeneth whom he will. All right, don't feel bad when he, get, when he doesn't get saved. Maybe it's not his time yet. All right? Okay? So don't feel bad. Okay, you know, Satan uses that also guilt for you not to be effective. All right? So, you, you know, when, 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 when in a form of rejection it says, well, I'm really interested. You know what I do most of the time? You know, before I leave, can I pray with you? All the time. When I, before I leave, can I pray with you? When I begin to pray, I begin to pray about him, about his work, his family. You know, I begin to pray uh, that God will really bless him. I get to pray that God will give him, will, will give him the, 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 uh, the, the understanding to open his heart. And I begin to pray. And believe me, when, I, when, when, I, when he becomes a lot friendlier to me. Because I, I, I want the person. Okay, because I pray for the person. You know, that's why I told you, in your first approach, it's very effective when you knock on the door and say, you know, I come here because I want to pray with you. I want you to share, you know, your concerns. I want to pray with you. Okay? All right. Okay, so th that, that, that's the thing. Now, and so uh, uh, another thing. Remember I told you last time. In sharing the gospel, in planting the seed, Okay, we ought not to be sharing about condemnation. I said last week that John, the Romans chapter 3, uh, the passage in regards to the depravity of man was not given to the prospect. It was given for us. Let me ask you. The uh, textbook on medicine, was that written to the patient? No, the textbook <coughs> about medicine is written for the doctors so that they will learn on how to what? Deal with the patient. Believe me, if you're going to give those textbooks to the patient, they will not understand that. The same thing, how, to, how to, uh, too often we tell, we tell the prospect, okay, read the Bible. They cannot, the, the Bible was not written for the unbelievers. The Bible was written to the people of God. It's our instructional book so that we can be able to reach the belief of the unbelievers. It's not written to, to, to the unbelievers. So don't attack the unbelievers with uh, depravity. Oh, the Bible says you're a sinner. No, it was written to us so we can be able to deal better with the unbelievers. To inform us about the condition of the unbelievers. Our mistake is we're using that to attack the unbelievers. No wonder they're becoming defensive. All right, because they're written for us, not written for them. So share the gospel. So use, do not use the condemn, condemning or judge, uh, judgmental 
passages, okay? Because Romans 3, where the depravity of man is explained, is for our information and must not be used to attack and scare the lost. Just like the medical books are written for doctors to know more about their patients. Share the gospel of repentance and faith. Share the gospel of confession. If this is the point where you're going to be sharing Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. Okay? Whatever you confess, you know, with the mouth, okay, with the heart, man believe in righteousness. So Romans chapter 10. In other words, after you share the gospel, okay, in the book of Romans chapter 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart. Immediately, ask the prospect, you know, I want to pray with you. Can I pray with you? Please. And then you pray. In that prayer, why you say, Lord Jesus, please, I will please open the heart of this person. Please make these people understand that you love them. Lord, Holy Spirit, quicken his heart right now so he'll be ready to understand the word. And then afterwards, you start praying. And then you say, before I end my prayer, can you pray with me? Can you pray with me? Are you now willing to confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth? Okay? And normally, they would say yes. Because your heart is soft now. If you're ready, why don't you pray with me? And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pray. I'm going to uh, utter the words, the sound of the words as I say it. And then we begin to pray. Okay? And after we pray, you know, I will pray the sinner's prayer, Lord Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. We begin to pray. I know. I have confessed my sins to you. Lord Jesus, I now receive you into my heart as my Savior. And he keeps on praying. And then after that, you know, amen. Then I will congratulate them. Are you? And then, of course, review. Have you prayed a prayer? Okay? In, the, in, in your prayer, what did you do to Christ? Did you receive Christ? Yes. Did you repent of your sins? Yes. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, you are saved. So where is Jesus now? In my heart. What kind of life uh, have you, you received today? Everlasting life. Praise God. You are now my brother in Christ. Or you are now my sister in Christ. And in other words, after that, resume your original prayer. Let's pray again. As I want to resume my first prayer. Mm. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you for saving this person. Now you see, in, 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 in this, uh, this uh, approach, there's no threat. In this approach, there's the stress level of the, uh, of the soul winner is low. Right? The stress level is low. Because you know you're not threatening, it's low. You're just introducing. You're just being a, a, a sower. You're just sharing the gospel. Okay? Now, now after that, after he's saved, welcome in, but don't stop there. The same day, the same time after he gets saved, begin nourishing him with the word of God. And tell him, you know, I, I'd like to share with you more about the word of God. Because he needs it. And fellowship. There's a time you begin to talk about yourself. Your testimony on how you got saved. Because he wants to see that. He wants to see his life in you. He wants to see his future in you. Because when a person gets saved, he's interested. You know, what have I got? What, 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 have, uh, have I, what have I done today? What do I expect right now? And so you begin to share your life. You know, when I got saved, and you know what? He will begin to relate and share the word of God. So nourish immediately the prospect with God's word and also your personal fellowship by sharing your testimony. So keep your testimony before your prospect because you're the open Bible he reads. And then afterwards, Meet with the prospect regularly until his faith matures. Okay? I remember, you know, when, when, when I was doing this, I would, I, I, I would go, go, go to the home and, 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 and my prospect would actually hide from me. It would hide and say, and this prospect has, you know, got saved. But you know what I would tell them? I say, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to leave your, uh, leave your house until you open the door. I know you're there. Yeah. It will take 30 minutes. And eventually he'll open the door. And he will apologize. Because if the person is truly saved, I tell you, he will be guilty. Because we need to show the prospect how committed we are. So never give up. 
Never. It should not be us that must give up. Sometimes when they go up there, he's not there. Well, you know, it's not interesting. Then he goes, no, never give up. Never give up. I tell you, when, 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 it, it's, uh, when you commit yourself there, God is, going to, God is going to bless you, okay? And by the way, your prospect will be the person that will also lead you to another prospect. He is your, he, he, he is your lead to another prospect. Use him. You know why it's effective? Because you already have experienced what you have experienced. And because he has experienced saving grace, he will also be interested in also reaching out to others. You know, I'm not saying you don't, you, you don't go to new neighborhoods. No, I'm not saying that. But too often, you'll be better off and getting a better prospect by going through the prospect. That's why it's important to always Stay with a prospect because it's where you're going to get your new prospect. Stay. Befriend the prospect. All right? Okay. Are you ready? Questions before, before we go into our role playing. Yes. Uh, we would uh, pray to know what is in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Okay. Any more questions? Four major points here with the first point. Okay. Prepare the soil. Second point. Plant the seed. Third point. Nourish the plant. Fourth point. Transplant. Okay. Where? Where do you have to share and encourage the prospect to pray? Where? You can't move. It's a person who's not, still dead. Where? Implant the seed. Okay? That's where you share. Implant the seed. Because, the, because sharing the gospel is the process of planting the seed. So that's where you share Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. Okay? And of course, in sharing the uh, gospel of repentance... You know, go to the book of, uh, of Acts chapter 20, verse 21. Dependence towards God and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's all about God. Our, our topic here in soul winning is never about a place, heaven. It's never about hell. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus as the Savior. Remember one thing. Why did Christ save you? Did Christ only save you from the place of judgment? No. He saved us from our sinful condition. The reason why, the reason why we're just to go to hell is because of our sinful condition. He saves us from sin. From the power of sin. From the effect of sin. And also from the presence of sin. So our approach is saving us from sin. From hell. Hell is only the effect of our sin. So therefore, our salvation is salvation from the sin and all its effects, and that's including hell. But too often, you know, we only share, oh, you need to be saved from hell. Well, hell is only an effect of sin. The main problem is what? Is hell the main problem? Sin is the main problem. So therefore, God is saving us from sin. Right? Okay. So the, so, so the approach of salvation is never about the place called hell. It's about our sinful condition. God wants to save you from your sinful condition. How, how can a person uh, understand about sinful condition? Now, look. Look at the result of sin in the Old Testament. The problems in this world, result of sin. Illness, result of sin. All the things happening in this world, result of sin. If there's no sin, we don't have any problem. But God will save you from that. Including hell. So hell is not the major thing. The major thing here is Jesus, the Savior. Okay, let's approach here. All right, okay, let's begin. 
Who wants to act as the uh, soul winner? And who wants to act as the prospect? Okay, get on me prospect. Now get your chair. Okay, here. Oh, what's right? Act as a soul winner. Do some of this microphone. Anybody? Okay, I'll do, I'll do it first, okay? Is that okay? All right, you can hold that. You can hold it. Oh, sure, I have a microphone. Okay, and then uh, prepare, okay? I'll do it first. Okay, sit down. Knock, 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 knock. Who's there? <laughs> Welcome, knock, who's there? <laughs> Uh, please, uh, hi, I'm hi, good morning. Yeah. I'm Pastor Obante from the International Bad Baptist Church. I'm here to just visit you and also to spend time with you and to pray for you. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, and uh, you know what? Uh, my church is only about two blocks away, and I'd like to invite you over there. Yes, and at the same time, you wa I want to know your family, you know, because uh, I, I do have concern about our neighborhood. There are a lot of things happening in Las Vegas. And, uh, and I want to share with you the most important thing <coughs> that I'm asking to ever receive. Okay, but before that, it, uh, uh, do you have anything, any concerns? Is there any you feel in that prayer? My father just passed away. Oh, your father just passed away. Yeah. Okay, what else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so after, after sharing the request, I pray. Immediately I pray. Okay. And then afterwards, of course, you know, after observing, oh, you know, I, you, you have a guitar. Do you, sing, do you sing? Do you play the guitar? Uh, yes. You know, I also love music. In fact, I graduated from a professor of music. And maybe one of these days we can just jam together, right? Or maybe, you know, our church, we sing a lot. Okay, would you be interested in singing with me? Or maybe have a jamming session next time? Yes. Okay. Um, however, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in Christianity, but I also want to explore different religions. I want to explore Buddhism, being you know a Muslim. What? That is great. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm a person who's also interested in a lot, in, 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 in a lot of topics, uh, especially religion. Yeah. But you know what? Just give me a few minutes about this very important subject. Is that okay? Yeah. And I promise you, once I share this with you, we'll go into that topic. I don't think I'm ready. You're not ready yet? Yeah. Well, you don't need to be ready about this. This yeah. does not need your readiness. I just want to share that with you, okay? You know, because it's just, if you're interested in religion, well, this is one of those things you should be interested about. Right? You just told me you're interested about the religion, right? So this, right. Must, be, this must be a subject that you're interested about. Are you ready? Uh, well, here, you got him already. <laughs> <laughs> now he cannot say anything anymore. Because he wrote the release of statements, he's interested with uh, those kind of things. Okay? And so afterwards, you know, I share with him about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I know you, I know you heard about Jesus. But you know what? You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ is not only a prophet of spirit that came. He's our Savior. In fact, even before he was born, he was already declared as, as, a, as, as, a, as, a, as a, a wonderful and, and, a, and a great news. Remember the time when the angel and the angelic beings pronounced that the shepherds are bringing good tidings of great joy. So even his birth was good news to all people. Okay, not only that, in the book of uh, First Corinthians 15, it's, you know, his birth, burial, and resurrection also is a good news. It's the gospel, because he's the only one who died and rose again from the grave. I, I, I agree with all that, okay. and uh, but I've I've had some bad experiences in the past with Christianity. From my family, from from people, um, how can I, you know, I how can I, I have trust issues? How how do I? How can I? Have you met me before? Uh, uh, no. Okay. Well, if you have not met me before, then you can't you can, you, can, you, you cannot immediately say you can trust me or can you trust me? Give me a chance. Right? Because to be fair with you and with me, just give me a chance. 
you probably had experiences in the past with other people, but I'm a different person. Because you just see more things. So those, those things immediately block that, okay? <coughs> because, you know, I tell you, prospect sometimes can, will, will, will think of things that just avoid you, okay? But, you know, but, but, but you still need to be, to be friendly, accommodating, and then you begin to share. Okay, and then of course after sharing, after sharing, okay, then you go, you know, there's a, there's a, there, there's a verse in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. That's what the Bible says. And that's the Bible says. Okay, and the Bible is, is true all the time. It's true all the time. Okay, and what I want you to do is say that, and, and, and then afterwards, after you share that, you say, can I pray with you? Why do you need to pray with them? in order to give a chance for the Holy Spirit to speak to him. Okay? You know, you need to stop talking because you're not the Spirit. So you pray with him, okay, in order for the Holy Spirit to have the chance to quicken him. And so you pray. Can you pray, please, with me? Okay, so you pray, okay? And bless all our hands. So Lord Jesus, I pray that you speak to the heart of this young man. Lord, I pray that you, right now, Lord God, that you would give him understanding. Okay? And, but... Uh, and, and, and when you pray that, when he hears his name, that you're praying for him, I tell you, he feels soft in his heart. When you, when you hear that you're, uh, you're, you're, you're actually compassionate about his, about his condition, he feels soft in his heart. Okay, and then after you pray with him, okay, all right, before I finish my prayer, okay, do you want to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in God's head? I said, why don't you follow the prayer? Then follow the prayer, finish praying. And in other words, check time. What, what did you pray? The last prayer. Did you, receive, did you pray about receiving Christ as your Savior? Okay. What kind of life have you received? Okay. Where is Christ in this life? Okay. So when you, uh, w- one, once you verify that, you know, praise God, I welcome you into the family of God. You are now my brother in Christ. Okay. And then don't stop there. You know what? I want to share with, share with you what happened to me when I got saved also. You know, I got saved in the camp. I didn't want to get saved because my, fa- my father was a preacher. I was so proud of myself. I didn't think I, 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 need, I need the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord just touched my heart. And I also received Christ as my Savior. So I shared the testimony. Because I want to prove to him the power of the word. Because I'm the only book that he reads. I'm the only example. I'm the only manifestation of God in his life. So I need to make God real in his life. So I share the testimony. Then I will share the word of God. And then afterwards, I tell him, you know what? Praise God, you're saved. You know, next week, I want to come at the same time. I want to see you again. Is that okay? All right? Be sure to be here, all right? Because I'm going to be here. <laughs> Good time. See, what you did, actually, is you turn, you turn the heart into a good heart. So what do you think? Okay, all right. Next. I, I volunteer <laughs> Preacher June. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next. Okay. To be the prospect. Oh, me. Okay. okay, who wants to be the prospect? Is there a prospect? Okay, okay who wants to be the, uh, the soul winner? Here's the prospect. Okay. Uh, lady soul winner. He gets confused. <laughs> he gets he gets confused about introducing Jesus. And you, you know what? In the in, in this approach, in this approach, you do not introduce Jesus. Okay, you don't say this. You do not let the Word of God does that. He is in Romans chapter ten. Always in the yes, always in the Word of God, not your own personal opinion. You know, you know, because because if, if he is trying to introduce Jesus, is it Jesus is can't introduce himself? <laughs> I mean, of course, he is God.
Ah, jadi. As a provocation, you know. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked me, "Well, Pastor, you know, I mean, I got saved even, even, even though I was provoked. That's great. That's the grace of God." Okay, are you ready? Okay, ready. Okay, at the very beginning. Oh, okay, uh, give, give him the microphone. Microphone. All right. Here, here. I'm a mother too, so okay. I, I relate to you. Um, you always have to be in everywhere, oh, right? Yeah, it's always keeping, yeah. keeping me busy. It's just, um, you know, really quick, if you can give me five minutes of your time, it will be nice. Um, maybe like two. Okay, least, let's make it two. It'll be too long for okay. my kids. Sure, I understand, I understand. Okay. Um, I'm just uh, visiting the area. I'm from uh, International Bible Baptist Church. Okay. It's actually not too far is away. That, uh, is that Christian? Yes, it's a oh. it's a Christian church. Oh, okay. Yes, okay, I'm I'm Catholic. So. Oh, you're Catholic. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I used to be a Catholic, you know, uh, since uh, uh, I was born until I was about uh, thirty years old. I was also Catholic. And okay. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you know, we have a lot in common. Right. <laughs> okay. So, um, just really quick, you know, I I like to um, invite you to our ladies minister you know we have a, a group that we can talk about the bible you have your bible right yeah yeah i have Catholic. my bible but you know it, it, i i just have such a busy life i cannot go to church all the time right, ministries right. it's just well, too you much know, going um, on for me right now um uh, about uh, eight years ago i accept christ in my heart as my savior and lord and since i i have that uh I made that decision. Uh, he he's uh, changed my life, and he helped me to read my Bible more often. And it's actually been helping me to improve my my lifestyle. Also, um, all my family is attending to church now. My husband used to be um, a person who doesn't really like about religion. Also, and but now he's he's focused. He's even a better husband, you know. So I, I really encourage you to, you know, to to invite Christ into your heart too, as your savior, because the Bible says that only through Him that we can be saved. He He paid the price of our sin on, on the cross, and He's the one who can take us to heaven. So, <laughs> can I pray for you before I leave? Yeah. Yeah. Should I do that too? That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Proceed, uh, proceed, yeah. I said you prayed already, so go ahead. Okay. Um, do you have anything, any emergency or any uh, problem at home that you want to me to pray for? Um, no. Just in general? Okay. okay. I'll just uh, pray for you to, so that he can bless your, your home, your, your marriage, your kids. And, um, that's it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, both. Uh, both. Okay. All right. A any comments? Any comments about the approach? What do you think about the approach? It's a, it's a typical classic approach. Okay. You know, I mean, uh, 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 any comments? Did, 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 did he prepare the, prepare the soil? Did, he did she prepare the heart? Mm -hmm. How did she prepare the heart? Uh, he used to be Catholic, okay. Uh, is it late? I think one, 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 one thing that I'm not saying it's a mistake, but 
I, I will not use uh, words that the prospect might not understand. Just like, for example, you know, uh, I've gotten saved because they still haven't experienced that gotten saved. You know, when I got saved, and, so, and some people, just because, you know, I mean, uh, to, to excuse their non-interest, they will not ask questions, <coughs> okay? And there's no way for you to be able to really know whether, whether he understood what you've said or not. So I would not mention those terminologies. Like you're a doctor, you're not going to, to use technol te te you know, uh, technical terms uh, to the patient. You make it as simple as possible, okay? And so, uh, so use, use, uh, use uh, terminologies that, that are common that they will understand. Uh, avoid using uh, biblical languages, at least at first, okay, before a person really receives Christ. Because again, you know, a natural man is not what? He does not have an interest in spiritual things. <coughs> All right, so that's a kind of provocation when you do that, okay? It's good at least, you know, you have, you have a wonderful prospect. <laughs> yeah, it's just not, just not hard. <laughs> yeah, too easy, yes. You know what, it depends. It, 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 it depends. You know, I would not actually use any religious name at the beginning because it's not, you know, I, w I would not even mention any religion, any church at the very beginning, except where I'm coming from. Okay, because, because sometimes... When, I, when you say, some people, they will take it as a, as, as, as a what do you call it, uh, as a rejection, offensive. offensive, as an offense. You know, I used to be a Catholic. Oh, well, what happened? Why did you leave the Catholic Church? So it, it, will, uh, it will plant some, some, some type of, uh, of rejection within. So I would not say that. I used to be a Catholic. So I will avoid those kind of, uh, those, those kind of topics, okay, until, until the person gets saved until the person receives Christ as Savior. At the very beginning, just soften. Just soften the soil. Just prepare the soil. Okay, talk about other things that will really interest the person. Okay, that's why I said, look, uh, yes. Well, in fact, that was, uh, that was also, also a discussion when uh, Dr. David Wood gave that uh, uh, training in the Philippines. Okay, you know, uh, what, what region are you? Well, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, that's wonderful. And so somebody said, well, you're just encouraging somebody to be a Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> you're just encouraging somebody to be a Catholic, which is wonderful. <laughs> okay, and that's true. And to some other people, they will, they will take it like that. Yeah. To other people, no. Okay, so so I, I, I would I would tend to avoid that because I don't want I don't want to make it appear that it's okay to be a Catholic, it's okay to be a, a Mormon, it's okay to be like this. So I will avoid that that approach. <laughs> it's good for you. Well, that's all the insulting. <laughs> to come down the person. You probably you you probably add add some other thing to make your point that that you're not well again you don't provoke the person yeah. you know so just just be careful for you not to be construed as uh, you are patronizing you know a false religion okay uh, but you know it's good and wonderful saying you know what you, you know what having I guess having faith will 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 will, will do good to any man okay because you know it, it's it's a matter of trusting somebody about who you are, so I guess it's, it's okay. Uh, because you know, wh what you wanna share is not, not you're putting your trust on the religion, but you're putting your trust on the Savior, on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
But if you can avoid, you know, adding it that way, then do that so as not to, uh, to, to give more confusion. Okay, one more pair. Who wants to be the prospect? Who wants to be the prospect? Who wants to be the prospect? Okay, who's the prospect? Are you the prospect? <laughs> Are you the prospect and he is the sole winner, okay. Okay, use, use the, uh, uh, prepare the soil, okay, plant the seed, okay, nourish the plants, and transplant, okay? I want you to go through the process. Go through the process, okay? Prospect, so winner. Hi, it's me. Are you selling me back the cleaners? <laughs> 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 are you buying? No. Are you one of those witnesses? No, I'm sorry, ma'am. And my name is Gabriel. Oh, just a second, because my daughter is trying to figure out. Okay, I'll say, what is it? My name is Gabriel. I can see. I can see you're a pretty you got a you're a pretty busy person, and I know that you're in the middle of things with your yeah. with your kids. And I can Are you selling me something? I am not. As a matter of fact, I am not selling anything. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I don't have any of those things. But I, I we're just we're just going around the neighborhood, and we're just visiting our our neighbors, and just to let them know and introduce ourselves and, and our church. That um, that we're just uh, we just truly uh, want to share um, an, an opportunity to uh, to um, that we can pray and uh, for for any sort of concerns that that people may have. You know, nowadays there's a, there seems to be a lot of things you know happening going on, and and maybe some something in in your own life that you would like maybe somebody to pray for. We just wanted to let you know that we're we're here to uh, to do that. Um, has anybody ever prayed with you before? Sounds uh, sounds like you definitely uh, like you like you you would be open to uh, to exploring about prayer and uh, and is that something that, that you would be open for? Yeah, for sure. Open to talking about that. Okay, great. Well, uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're open. Well, I'm glad that you're open to prayer. And uh, and just before I head out, uh, I just would really uh, would like to just. Uh, yeah, is that is that okay? Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, um, but before I head out, before we start praying, I do just want to ask you real quick: um, Has anybody ever asked you about how to have a relationship with God? No, but have you ever heard of the book called Jesus? If it's a if it's a book that I've heard about, then I guess it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> I think you're in the middle of it with your kids. <laughs> but, what, but what interested you? But it sounds like you do definitely have a lot of things to explore regarding spirituality. And, and, and am, I, am I correct? Yeah. Well, those are some very great, uh, those are some very good concerns that I would definitely would like to address. Um, and I would like to come back, if you don't mind, you know, and actually you know, sit down with you and kind of go through that. Uh, would that be something that would interest you? Yes. Okay. Yes. But um, but like I said, I just want to do. I, I do want to come back and you know, to my original question regarding a relationship with God. Is that something that you would like to explore more more about? Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Okay, we'll tell you what. Um, let me let me share let me share with you just uh, just what it is that the Bible has to say um, about us having a, a relationship with God. Um, me personally, I was a, I was a person that uh, that was uh, insecure about my 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 life and about what uh, where I was going and whether whether there was some something out there uh, greater than myself that I can find purpose for my life. And I started searching, like I, I'm sure you're, you're in that position where you're searching as well uh, regarding purpose in life and what it's all about. Am I correct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it sounds like there's definitely search there. And that's the one that I'm talking that's about. That's what I was searching for in the universe. Okay. You know, you know the energy that you put out there and then you get back. <laughs> it sounds like you're very energetic then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but again, you know, it's it's not gonna take any longer any more uh, any more of your time. But again, I do want to share. You know that um, I I found that uh, that purpose in Christ Jesus, and uh, and through Him, the Bible tells us that He is the way, the truth, and the life, and that uh, and that there is no other way but through Him, and that there is an opportunity for you to have that relationship with God. Um, through our Lord Jesus Christ. How do you know that? Uh, how do I know that, I that I can have one? Yeah. Well, that is a very good question. Uh, the Bible says, you know, that for God to love the world, that, that he has given his only begotten son, that for whosoever believes in him, you know, shall not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. And that's just, and that's just how we know. And uh, would that be something that you'd be, be interested in, in having that relationship, uh, being secure of that relationship with God? Well, well, uh, I don't know. I'm just not comfortable with that. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of questions about Jesus Christ, and that's one of the things that I want to do. Come back in my next in my next visit. Would you mind if I would you mind if I uh, if I pray with you before I head out? Because I know you do have a a, a, a big yes, thing. Is that okay? <laughs> okay, let me pray for you. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. What, okay, what is your comment about the, about the approach here? What is your comment about the approach here? Uh, what is your comment about the approach? There, there's seven things I've noticed that. Okay, now be sure when you are the sole winner, you be in control of the conversation. No. Be in control of the conversation because be, because if you start asking the person, it's it, 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 it just going to give a lot of ideas. <laughs> that's why that's why I also said that you don't even ask the person to be saved. You don't say, would you like to be saved? Would you like to know? You don't. Okay. Always give way to prayer because you are giving way for the Holy Spirit to speak to him instead of you speaking. Because the more you speak, the more you're actually giving a, giving a, giving a chance to, to, to get back at you. But when, the, when you pray, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to the, to, to the heart. So if you want to get into the prayer, okay, and at the very beginning, be in control of the conversation. You, 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 you control the direction of the conversation. Okay, immediately, if, so, if it's something that, that, that you don't want to discuss with him, you just tell him, you know what, uh, let's talk about it later, okay? And let's go first to my, 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 my original, uh, so you do that. That's what you got to do. Direct to the main thing. Always, always stay, stay on track. I think Dr. Wood said that. Stay on track. Okay, don't, don't get out of track. All right, so don't allow don't, uh, the prospect to, uh, to, to take you to another kind of topic. Okay, so control the, conver control the conversation. That's what you got to do. I know it will take some time for you to get used to that, okay? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, you got you got it from them, huh? <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm I'm going I'm going to give uh, hopefully uh, the uh, uh, the outline will be ready by Sunday. So I'll give it, give it to you. Study that, 
and then they will, and then, you know, I, I'd like you to be able to learn that approach, okay, the four-part approach, okay? All right. Okay, let's now go to our preacher. Let's now welcome Preacher Jan Galana to come. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, guys. I learned a lot just from the role playing. Everyone still awake? Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 6. Let's all stand, please. Matthew 6. We'll read verse. 19 to 25. Again, that's Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 25. This is an expository message. The expository unit is verse 21. Again, Matthew 6, verse 19 to 25. If you're there, please say amen. amen. Okay, let's read this responsibly and all together on verse 25. It says here, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we've already received this evening, Lord, from uh, our service today, and, uh, and through your servant, our Pastor Hearns, and the teaching and preaching given to us, even the role-playing that, um, uh, that they have uh, uh, volunteered, Lord, to to illustrate to us, Lord, the principles we've learned in soul winning tonight, O oh God. Teach us, Lord, to uh, to apply those things in our lives, Lord, and, and uh, cause us, Lord, to, to be instruments of the gospel, Father. Uh, we thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this time you've given to us, to me, to be able to serve you, Lord. Truly, your uh, grace uh, is greater, Lord. Your grace is, uh, is everything, Father. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May we see that? Again, the expository unit is verse 21. It says, therefore, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The title of this message is, Where is your heart? So we, we'll learn through these verses that, that we'll study here tonight how to answer that question. When I, when I say, where is your heart? You know, I'm not referring to uh, our anatomy. You know, of course, uh, physically it's here. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, if you like someone, you know, the person next to you. I'm not even talking if, if your wife or your husband is here. Not, not, not in that sense. But when I, when I give this title of where is your heart, as, as the Lord Jesus Christ gave it, okay, we're talking about what, where, where, where is our purpose, okay, as God created us, created us here for. We, we see that in, in, uh, in sharing the gospel. We see that in what we've just learned um, earlier through our Pastor Hermes, okay? Th this whole approach. Uh, we see that in the lives of our preachers, the soul winner, okay? But how would you answer that today? Lord Jesus Christ, uh, um, in this passage here, okay, he's speaking on the Sermon on the Mount, right? Okay, yeah, he had just, uh, of course, speaking on the so Sermon on the Mount, you have the apostles there, you have his disciples there, you may have had people that 
um, may have not been saved yet at that time, listening to him also. And if you can imagine, you know, I'm not sure how exactly how many people were listening to him or were there for the message. But uh, you have to picture also that if, if those closest to him was nearest, he probably had some enemies also in the midst of them. I'm talking about the Pharisees were there also. I'm not sure where they were. Maybe they were sort of in the outskirts, okay? Not, not necessarily visible to him, but they could hear what he was going to say. And of course, he's correcting, okay, as he preaches even in chapter 4 and 5 and now 6, okay, some of the wrong teaching that they had, they had um, uh, fed to the people. He was, uh, he was correcting, okay, and instructing and teaching, preaching, okay, on what exactly should be the right godly view when it comes to ourselves, when it comes to God's word, when it comes to the world, when it comes to morals, Okay? When it comes to God, talking about not just simply the Pharisee standards, okay, but what is God's standards? Okay? So that when, it, when we talk about where is your heart, we're talking about where is the, where's the investment of your life today? Where is the purpose? Where, where are your goals today? Okay? And we'll find that here. Verse 1 again, it says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, so if you know where your treasure is, you'll know where your heart is. Um, we, we live in an age today that's about all about things. Amen. I heard this illustration on the radio just a few days ago about Mr. and Mrs. Thing. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Thing, they both work okay, so they can buy things. Okay? They, they just recently bought some small things and some big things. Okay? So this big thing, okay, they had rooms where they bought things. Okay, things for the kitchen, things for the garden, things for the garage, things for the kids, things for themselves. And then they went to work and they, they bought more things. Okay, things for work, gadgets, so on and so forth. So their life became a, a, a life of simply things. And that's why they were known as Mr. and Mrs. Things. But the, came, the time came when they got old and they realized that, you know what, there's going to be a, a time in my life when, uh, when I die, there's not a thing that I can take with me. We live in that kind of an age today. We, li we live in a culture today where uh, it's easy to, uh, to get things. Amen? Amen. It's easy to get things, um, and uh, it's easy to buy things. It's easy to borrow, to get things. Amen. You know, with you know, just pretty much every day, you know, there's credit card offers that come in the mail, and sometimes I don't even want to see it anymore, so I don't get tempted. But we live in that kind of culture today. So. The Lord Jesus Christ is, is, is talking here about what our response is. How we should live our life. Do we live our life just to, to accumulate things? And what are the important things? Okay? So, Mr. and Mrs. Things, they bought big things, they bought small things, but basically they bought things that won't last. Now, for us as Christians, okay, we all buy things also. But tonight, we want to learn what exactly are the things or the, the people or what is the, the purposes that we can do in our life so that we can make something of our life that will last and so that we won't live our life just simply to get things that will not last okay so again where is your heart well, how would you answer that question before God again, again I trust God that his love is greater amen you know I remember uh, out of college, and fr I first started working, uh, I got I got in trouble with credit cards. You know, I've, I've fought that beast many times in my life. Now, I think I was talking to uh, Richard Ben. You know, he's going to be my advisor, <laughs> and up to today. But through the Bible, God gives us uh, some medicine, Amen, to be able to to cure the, this illness if it's an illness. Okay, 
So again, how would you answer that question before? There are three questions, okay, that we want to know and we want to ask of ourselves today. Okay, three questions found in this passage. And I believe that these three questions really, okay, become one question. And out of that one question, okay, there's a choice that you and I have to make. So again, where is your heart? Okay, in order to understand that, to answer that, we must know, okay, where our treasure is. In Matthew 6, 19, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. <clears throat> so, where do you lay up your treasure? Do you lay up treasure in, on earth, or do you lay up your treasure in heaven? If you lay up your treasure on earth, the Bible says it's corruptible, okay? It doesn't last, okay? By the way, when, when the Bible talks about this word treasure, okay, that's, that's what it is, treasure. It's not just, you know, okay, if I have $20 in my, in my wallet, okay, if I make $500 a paycheck, okay, that's, that's, not, that's still not a treasure, okay? It's talking about how much do I make, okay? But not simply that if I make a lot, okay? It's talking about wealth. It's talking about expensive things, okay? So if God gave me a job where I make $1,000 a week, okay? And out of that job, let's say I pay $700, okay, for all of my needs, how much would that leave me? About 300. So I would have 300, okay? Then I wouldn't have, I wouldn't need to worry about, okay, if it's, is it for the bills? Is it for food, for shelter, okay? That, that's my excess. Okay, that's my wealth. Okay, that's my treasure. That's my money that I can do what I want to do with. Okay? I can choose to put that okay, on earthly treasures. Or okay, I can ask God for wisdom and ask God, you know, how, how can I put this towards heavenly treasure? Of course, it's not just money. Okay? It's our time also. It's our resources. It's the uh, abilities that God give, gives to us. It's our calling also as preachers. Okay? It's our soul winning also. Those are treasures that we can store in heaven. So, back then, okay, uh, money was measured in three things. Okay? You had garments for other clothes. There's grain or food. And then there's gold. Now, the Bible says all of these things, okay, don't last. They corrupt, okay? Moth and rust doth corrupt, it says here, okay? Or thieves will break through and steal it, okay? So do we lay our treasure, our wealth, okay, not the, not the, not, not the necessities, not simply just things, okay? But do we lay it on earth where it can be corrupted? Or do we lay it on heaven where it is incorruptible? Where it can be have eternal value, okay? See, there's a principle here that what we keep for ourselves, we lose. Okay? But what we give and invest in God's kingdom, we keep and we gain in heaven. Amen? Okay? So what do you, what do you invest in God's kingdom today? Deuteronomy 28, verse 8, it says, The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and, all that, and in all that thou set, set, settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, um, when we work, people talk about the, the rat race. You know, always people are always trying to get ahead of each other. Now, um, I was in the Philippines recently, and of course, we know there's a lot of things going on there right now, some negative things going on, and, you know, I was talking with my uncle, there's uh, some positive things also with the economy, they have this thing going on there, which it's called the, I see them if you watch Philippines, uh, the ASEAN integration, where a group of uh, countries in here in the Philippines, okay, they will sort of um, be more friendly to each other when it comes to business. Say 
banks, uh, left from China, <coughs> India, or other countries, they, 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 they'll start bringing their best and indigenous to the Philippines, right? And it'll create jobs, it'll create this, it'll create that, okay? But it'll also create a more of a competitive market. And I talked to my uncle and he's a businessman there, and he said there are two things that uh, Philippines might lose because our banks are not as big as their banks. I remember when I was in school in the Philippines in um, the 80s, um, around the Marcos time, that you, I believe you were number one when it came to sugar and pineapple okay, in Asia. Um, today, they <coughs> say we no longer, uh, we actually buy pineapple and coconut from other countries now. Right, because our farms in the Philippines, they were not <coughs> taken care of. They didn't modernize, okay? Basically, we, did, we, we didn't exhibit good stewardship, okay, of these farms, of the, these plants and plantations that we used to have. So, I'm saying that because God <coughs> has wants us to be, as we know, good stewards also of what God gives to us, of our church, okay, of our time, of our family, okay, of our jobs, even the money that God has given to us. Okay? But there's a principle here that we ought to lay treasures, not on earth, but in heaven. <coughs> in verse 28, v verse 28 of Deuteronomy 28, verse 8, I'm sorry, verse 8, okay, there, there's a word here that kind of struck me. It says here that the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I believe that the storehouse is the local New Testament church. Amen? <coughs> and in our storehouse here, the local New Testament church, we have a smaller storehouse. For example, the building fund. Okay? Missions. Okay? Now, what I'm saying is, there came a time when this verse spoke to me that the Bible says that the Lord will command blessing in our storehouses. Now, what will cause God to command the blessing in the storehouses? So I believe simply if we simply, just like that song says, trust and obey. If we obey God's principles and allow God to bless us. Okay, it's not prosperity gospel, okay, but this is the Bible. This is what the Bible teaches us. Okay? So, Storehouse is a foundation in which we can establish God's kingdom. Of course, I believe, we believe this to be the local New Testament church. So, that first question, where do you lay up your treasure? In heaven or on earth? Second, how do you see things? What kind of vision do you have? Matthew 6, 22, verse, 20, verse 22 says, The light of the body is the eye, if, if therefore... Thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? What kind of vision do you have? Do you see things the way the world sees, it, sees things? How's your eye? How do you see? Are, is it blinded by the world? Is it blinded by the things of the world? Is it blinded by money? Or do you have a heavenly vision? If you have a worldly vision, you're, you and I are stuck in the darkness. That's what the illustration is here. If the light that is in thee is darkness, how great is that darkness? There'd be no light because all you see is darkness. But if you have a heavenly vision, that eye sees light. That eye sees things the way God sees them. And so are you in the light? Would you open your eyes and see God's glorious face? Amen? Are you focused on the light? In verse 22, it says, If the light of the body is the eye, if therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. It says here, if thine eye be single. In, I looked in other versions. It says, if thy, it, it gives the word healthy. If thy eye, if thine eye, be healthy in other versions. Okay, so I went to the root word. Okay, the root word comes from this word hapluos. Okay, hapluos means generous. 
It means liberal. Hey, think of the Macedonians. The verse what talks about the Macedonians. They they gave out of the they gave generously out of the liberality, right? Okay. So it says here, if thine eye be single, have pluos, generous, okay, liberal. Thy whole body shall be full of light. I praise God for our cheerful giving song, amen, and what that teaches to us every time we give offering. Thy whole body shall be full of light. Second Peter 1 9, it says, But he that lacketh these things is blind, and he cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he hath been purged from his old sins. We need to see things how God sees them, amen? Now, we had Joel playing earlier, right? A little bit of Joel playing today. If I said, uh, Sister Matthew, if I said the word wood, what would be the first thing that you would think of? What did you think of? Tree. Is it wood? Yeah, that's a wood. Is it wood? A wood. That's what we would think of, right? A table, maybe a chair. What do you think God thinks of when, <laughs> when, he, when he thinks of wood? Try to think of the forest, the trees, the Amazon. If I say God thinks bigger, if I say water, we think of a glass of water. Okay. I, was, I was asking Matthew to get me water earlier. <laughs> but when God thinks of water, he thinks of the ocean, right? Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. What I'm trying to say is that our God is a God of abundance, amen? amen. And he never runs out. But for us, as humans, it's sometimes hard for us to grasp that. Amen? We are, some of us, we live paycheck, paycheck, paycheck. You know, I wonder where I'm going to get next week's supply. I wonder where I'm going to get this. I wanna wonder how I'm going to fill my need. You know? Tuition, bills, rent, mortgage, insurance, okay? Taxes, IRS. Amen? But we have a God a God that is a God of more than enough. Amen? Amen? And He owns everything. Somebody talked about prosperity and prosper. It's not just to have to prosper. Amen? Not just to have things right now. But it's important also for posterity. Posterity means that when we go, we would leave something behind. We leave a legacy to our kids, to the church, to a foundation. So again, how do you see things? Do you have God's vision? Do you see with God's eyes? And how is your eyes? Is that eyes blinded? Does it, does it see the light? Or is it in darkness? If my eyes weren't working, I could have the strongest hands, the fastest feet, but I wouldn't be of use because I couldn't see, right? So that's the illustration here. Last question, who is your master? Today, who owns you today? Matthew six twenty four, it says, "No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one. He will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon. You know, somebody said that money is a force." Somebody said that money has no character, has no morals. Somebody said money reveals our integrity, our stability. That word money comes from the Greek word mammon or mammonas, money. Okay, again, just like treasure, it doesn't just speak of if I have 20 or 40 dollars in my wallet. Okay? Okay. It really talks about wealth. Of course, money is not the rule of evil. Actually, let's go to the verse. 
1 Timothy 6.10, it says, For the love of money is the rule of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay? Earlier we just said, you know, praise God, we have a God of more than enough. Amen? We have a God of abundant supply. But I wonder if we believe in that God when it comes to money. That truly He has an abundant supply for us. Do you serve God? Do you serve? Do you follow after God? Do you hold on dear to the things and the works and the greater works of God? Or do you serve Mammon is the question the Lord Jesus Christ said. Do you live for money? To be rich? To accumulate wealth? Do you love money? Do you lie because of money? Oh, I don't lie. How about your tax return? Do you lie on your tax return? Giving. If you're a salesman, are you honest when you sell something? If you're a businessman and you invest, are you honest in your investment and your business dealing? That's the love of money. That's what the love of money can do to even us, some of the hardest working Christians. It's a beast that we all deal with. So what is money? Somebody said money is a tool so we can buy stuff. So we can provide for our family. So that we can give to the church. Bible says it's a test, right? We have to be good stewards, stewards. Good managers of what God gives to us. According to the Bible, I think it's a testimony. It reveals who we are. No? It's tax season. For the, us that work, what, what did we get recently in the mail? What's that paper we get? W-2. And the W-2 is says what? What does the w-, w tell us? How much? How much we made, right? I think for most of us, we probably made more than last year than we made the year before. Because we get a raise. But what does that W tell you about you and about me? Most of the time we look at that, boy, I made that much, boy, the boy. And I'll go to my bank account, oh, it's not there. <laughs> money is a testimony. What is money not? Okay. I'm not sure how much time I have, but I'll just give the verses. So what is money not? Okay. Okay, so money is a tool, it's a test, it's a testimony. What is it, what is it not? Okay, it is not a measure of self-worth. Okay, Deuteronomy 8, verse 16 to 18. Okay, you don't have to go there. Money is not the reward for godly living, although I believe God can bless us here. Okay, and the verse for that is 1 Corinthians 3, 13 to 15. Money is not a guarantee of contentment. Remember, remember King Solomon in Ecclesiastes? Chapter 5, verse 10. Money is not a measure of success. Joshua 1, verse 8. Okay? When God said he'll bless us, he's, he didn't say <coughs> that, that money would be the measure of success. Joshua 1, 8. So how do you see money? What is your approach to finances? Is it biblical? You, know, you go to the bookstore, there's a lot of books that teaches you how to manage your money today. There's a lot of experts, right? Yeah. There's a lot of peop- famous people that you can listen to on TV and on the radio now. Yeah. Who are that? Susie? Susie? <laughs> but we have to just go to the Bible. Amen? No, watch movies sometimes and uh, no, shows on TV or, or, C, or suspense shows, CSI, you know, those murder shows, you know. 
uh, thrillers and stuff. I usually, there's crimes committed, usually it's because of money, right? And usually the, the heroes in these movies are these princess. Basically they follow this principle where we just follow the money. Follow the money, you catch the, uh, the crook, right? Where is your heart today? Follow the money. Amen. Ephesians 4, chapter 4, verse 5 and 6 says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. So God owns it all. Amen. The money is God's even before he put it in the offering plate. But for us as Christians, to be honest, there's a growth process when it comes to money, when it comes to finances. Sometimes when it comes to trusting God. We all make mis- I've made mistakes, many mistakes when it comes to money. Big amounts, small amounts, I guess the amount is not important. But what's important is, did I exercise my faith? Did I put my faith in action? when it comes to God's principles regarding money. That's what I'm learning now. I praise God for the building fund. Through the building fund, uh, God gave me some courage, okay, to uh, to not buy or indulge in certain things that I would have bought. Just by the way, sir. Thank you. Now we have, uh, we have allowance that they give to us during Sunday. In, in Silicon Valley, and I said, you know what? Uh, I don't need it. You know, just I don't want to see it. Just put it straight to the building fund. So, in conclusion, what is the condition and the motive of your heart today? Again, where's your treasure? What kind of vision do you have? Who is your master today? Where's Matthew 6, verse 25, it says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? What's the condition of your heart? Do you have a heart that's always anxious, always worrying? Or can you claim this verse in verse 25 and truly live a life, okay, that trusts God fully, 100%. It says in... First Timothy 6.6, 6, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. In Hebrews 13.5, it says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor, nor forsake thee. Edwin Cole said, We sow to the future and reap from the past. You know, too much of something is never good, amen? Just like the light bulb, it works fine because the electricity is right. But if you put too much electricity, what is going to happen? It, it'll blow up or something, right? Or you might catch a fire. Contentment. Be content. Let's be content with what God give to, gives to us and let's simply <coughs> allow him to be our master, amen? And in allowing him to be our master, Perhaps there we'll master our money and not have money master us. The love of money is the root of all evil. It's sad how Christians stop serving and fall by the wayside because they take their eyes off Jesus. They allow money to master yourselves. Again, do you lay treasures on earth or in heaven? Do you have a worldly vision or a heavenly vision? Do you serve the right master today? What do you consider is your treasure today? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. How do you answer this call? Amen. I believe that when God calls, our own response should be, but you answer. Thank you. All right. Any any comments? Anybody would like to, anybody would like to give comments? Does the body, or does the message agree with the text? Does the title uh, agree with the, the, the major points? 
do you find progression? Uh, is his expiratory unit the right choice? What do you think? Is the title the right choice given the text? The title is uh, Where Is Your Heart? Did, did, uh, did you hear him give the title? Uh, Where's Your Heart? Matthew 6, 19 and 25. Expository unity chose was verse 21. All right, yes. Okay, lacking of uh, background. Shaman in the mouth, okay. Also, anything else? I try to listen to the message uh, as a uh, person who does not know the word of God. I think when you preach, you need to uh, think of those people who do not have any background of the Bible would they be able to understand what you're talking about? Just like, for example, when you, say, when you say, you know, lay up your treasures in heaven. Does a regular, normal, natural man understand that? How can I lay my treasure in heaven? Like remember, when you preach, you're preaching, you're actually uh, two-pronged preaching. You're targeting the, the believers and unbelievers as well. You're targeting the mature. You're also targeting the immature people. Uh, of course, as, as a mature, as a preacher, I, can, I, I know what, what he means by that. But I don't think there is enough explanation on what does it mean to lay up treasure in heaven. I think it would be much better if you would give a lot more illustrations or examples on how you can lay up treasures in heaven as compared to laying up treasures on earth. What's the difference? Okay, because otherwise we'll be, we'll, 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 we'll be missing, uh, a lot of people are, are, are gonna be missing uh, the, uh, the, the wha one of the major points here, especially your first point, okay? All right, uh, so I think now, I know th the uh, extra story message is the most difficult message to prepare. Okay, because in the extra story message, you need to you need to select a passage, okay, that pretty much uh, point out or point to the same theme, the same topic. Okay, if not, at least uh, do something in order to be able to really incorporate them together. And for them to really uh, would come out as, uh, as as progressive as a unit together instead of uh, 
separate units uh, because there can be, uh, for, for example, in, in, in the Expo Store Unity, he, he, he chose verse 21. Now, by the way, the first thing you got to do is you need to look at the main idea of the text. What is the, what I if you're going to think of the main idea, okay, uh, take away the Expo Store Unit, all right? If you're, going, if you're going to look at the main idea of verse 19 to verse 25, what would it be? What would it be? <coughs> what is the what? What would be the main idea of the whole text from uh, verse 19 to verse 25? Well, it is, it is it's stewardship. Yes. Yeah, it is stewardship. Yes. Thank you, money, possession. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, teacher. Ilan, I mean, Ilan, yeah. It's incredible how people really look at things so differently. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, uh, if I'm going to consider the, the main theme of this, I'm looking at the, uh, at the, at the issue of heavenly mindedness. Okay, if we're going to live our lives, are we heavenly minded? Are we mindful of God? Are we mindful of his will? Are we mindful of his grace? Are we mindful of his plans? Now, there, you, you, know, you notice there are three uh, the, 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 there are three uh, a kind of look at the physical man. There are three things involved in the heart, the eye, and the whole body. What is the heart? Okay, the heart, and then the eye, and the whole body. The whole body referring to, uh, you know, serving, serving masters. Okay, so it's not actually only referring to the, the, the heart because the heart is only focused on verse 19 and 20. That's what I would look at it. Okay, which is totally uh, separated from verse 22, talking about <coughs> the eye, which is totally separated from the verse 24, 25, talk, talking about us, you know, the whole body serving a master. So there are three, there, there, there are three ways there are three ways of, of giving heavenly mindedness. With your heart, okay, with your eye, your focus, and with the way you serve and who you serve. That's, what I, that's how I look at it. Uh, uh, because in, 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 in what you've done, uh, uh, 
it, it, it kind of detached the idea. You know, uh, that's why it, uh, I'm, I'm trying to look at the, progress, uh, the progression of the, of, of the idea you presented here. I, I can't really find the progression. If, if I would, you know, if, if, if I would probably entitle this, I would, you know, how can we be uh, heavenly minded? How can we behave? How can we be mindful of God in whatever we do? Okay, what? We need to be mindful of God, okay, with our heart. Our heart, okay, verse 21. We can need to be mindful of God with our eyes. We need to be mindful of God with our total being in service, in serving the true master as opposed to others. In that way, you can be able to really make it, make it simple, uh, uh, you know, focus, and more, you, you, your audience will, more fo will, will better follow you, you know, instead of, in, because you, what, 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 you, what you've done, I mean, uh, you know, you, you, you pointed out a lot of good things. Everything you've said are good. But, but, but I think what happened also, you've thrown three things there. You've thrown three things. One, two, three. And when your audience go away, what among those three things are they going to remember? Have you incorporated all those three things into one so that when they remember the one thing, then they can be able to focus on, on those three? It's like, for example, uh, the main theme is heavenly minded, okay? I want to be heavenly minded with my heart. So I'm going to put my, 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 my treasures going to be uh, in things about, in the things of God. That's how I can be, how can, how can be mindful about God. I'm going to be heavenly minded about, my, the, about what I perceive, about how I perceive things, how, how, about how I look at things, how about how I see things, about I. I'm going to be heavenly minded in the way I serve, okay, and also in who I serve. Okay, it's that way you're, 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 you're actually, just like the message, remember in preaching, from, from a very broad idea into a focus idea. That's what you do. Okay, in teaching from very, you know, focus to broad because you're doing a lot more details. And so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, at least, at, at, at least, you know, uh, I don't know if that, if, if, if that, if that um, uh, more, make, makes more sense, at least in, in, my, in my case, will make more sense instead of, instead of uh, pre presenting three different ideas there. Because I look at the title, Where's Your Heart? And then your first, your, your first point is, where do you lay up your treasure? Your second point is, what kind of vision do you have? But the vision is not talking about the heart. Okay? And your third point is, who is your master today? You know, so it's detached. Remember, our title must agree with the main thing all the time. So, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you, you uh, maybe that, that's, what, that's what I would have done. Okay? All right. Okay, next, um, who is our next speaker? He's coming, he's coming, Jerome. Sunday. And then? What will be the next one? Jeremy. Jeremy, the next one? Okay, uh, Jeremy. Are you still going to the team? Is there a team that you're doing now? Team? No, there's no team. Oh, okay. You have to select your own pastor. Okay? Okay, God bless you. You're dismissed.